500 meter ease. Yeah, so I just done a big, massive loop, 250 meters for this dog, dog, dog racing track. Got to hook up this little control thing here too. Yeah, lots of cable this. Fair decent run. Four lengths of conduit, we put a tape here, we haven't glued it. We've got a draw wire in here. So we're gonna pull our cable through. Yeah, this was the cheapest way of doing it, to dig in a trench. And it's ELV, so it's not uh, mains voltage. For some reason I volunteered myself to <laughs> put this cable, wrap this cable up. I'm just gonna chuck it in this to see the magic happen. Started it like that, and I'm just gonna roll it in like that. There's what 100 meters of SDI looks like rolled up. Got about 80 more to go. Okay, all done. If you want to know how I get it in nice and neatly, I just half twist it as I put it in. So I'm just twisting it, I slowly just do a half twist on it. And then you've got somewhat neat, there's nearly 200 meters of cable there. I've got to roll this sucker up. Bloody hell. At least i got my lengths here. So, if you a long run, this one will be fun to roll up. So let me talk about what I'm actually doing today. We're upgrading this um, Greyhound system. So, doing a bit of in-stray work today, basically. So I've just basically run, they've got a start cell here. And they originally just had a, they had the starting box and a finish cell. But now we've got the, the we're, we're putting an extra, this, this section one cell here. So basically they know the start time, the finish time, and when they, um, and like the, 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 what do you call that? The short time before they, you know, start the whole run. Yeah, that's what's intended. So here's a little dog box. Had to extend this limit switch. There's only just one of them in here. This is just a practice track. So yeah, you obviously just stick the dog on this one. This thing goes down, clicks in on there. And then this is a little lever to let them go. Stick them in the box. And then push the lever. And you see my little limit switch here? This is what I'm wiring up. I just gotta adjust it. It's right there's the tension part. So I don't know if I need to bend that down a touch more to get it, but I really only got this one bracket and I've just um, drilled and tapped it in there. Drilled and tapped it on there. Yeah, I've got to put some more, obviously put some inlines and heat shrink. Just need to extend that cabling because we're just upgrading this system. So yeah, looks like a bit of saddles and some conduit and try to adjust this limit switch. I think I might just have to bend it. But yeah, I was trying to get it in the best spot. Because obviously when, when, when it, you want it to come as soon as that you know, hits down there. So I think I might just need to bend that back. That's how the action works. Okay, now that I've got the conduit in place, I just have to be super mindful where I'm putting the screws in this. Because obviously this is a the dog sits in here. You can see this one's I've used these these types of um, what are they? Button head screws, bolts. But yeah, I'm just going to try to use something similar here. I'm probably just going to use three saddles, I reckon. That's what I come up with. Just use these little screws. They don't stick out too much. But yeah, with some thought put into this. Whenever you're doing um, any type of lead switches or anything, make sure you leave a service loop for yourself for the next guy. It's um, be always great and pleasurable experience. I ended up uh, adjusting this, ended up having to bend this up a touch and obviously move this down. Yeah, this is reliable. It basically cuts out out there, which is basically, you know, where that glue bottle is. So yeah, that's a good start time for them. You know I have to do it. They're up and racing. Dickhead me didn't label the cables, did I? So I've just shorted out one end. Let's bell her out. Found it. I know the resistance is of this cable. 4.3 ohms, if that's how much you want to know what figure eight is for that length. So let's make it the sound of my people. There you go. How's that for a service loop? Now this is where I like to use some gel, but I only got what you got given to you. But yeah, I'll just put the wagos facing upwards so if water to get in here, it should hopefully not be so bad. Check out this sick device. 
This one's just a little photo electric, so it's just normally open, yeah, normally open contact and tw 24 volts is what this one's getting. Look at the voltage it runs at. It usually goes up to 240 volts AC. Yeah. How sick is that? I'll show you a little timer in, on top here. Okay, there's a photo of it close up. I'm paying the arse this terminal block. That is my big gas bottle sold of these figure eights. This is the existing setup. They basically just got one of these automotive connectors on there. I joined it. The red one's my power cable. But yeah I've got to somehow join it into there and make it waterproof. I've got to come down from here and here's just where my um, new switch wire goes for my one down the finish line down there. So this has just got to be joined here. We'll obviously run the cable back to there to this little control box so we're getting there and then obviously we go do the one on the other side there focus anyway you get the picture that's just got 24 volts so basically this has got a switch wire 24 volts that one there just gets power so it's just big beam power on the beam and then once it does it sends a signal back down that way okay here's what i've done i've just used, used an inline 2.5 mil inline but single insulator then i got this glue heat shrink Okay, this actually looks pretty fun to commission. So we've got to line it up. There's an infrared bar and it's meant to give us a little green light. And we chuck something through it and it's meant to die down, I guess, when it's, an object goes through it. And then we can adjust the time settings. The sensing time. Oh, it's got a sensing range, 0 to 50 meters. So we'll have to adjust that and the time function. Which is uh, what's that? The overall time, the start time, the finish time, and then the total time together. So we might have to do those settings and the controller there somewhere. Okay, so here's my little controller. Pretty interesting. Is just a laptop cable plugs into this controller in here. Oh, here's a little control box. It's just the power supply basically, and we've got 24 volts out in the field. And um, so start box, that's that little dog box. Um, split would be the very first time and then our finish one. So we just installed the split and run power for that one as well. So they're getting start, split and finish time. So yeah, it should be a good little setup. Let's show you the controller. So here's a little device. Timmy 3. Switch it on. I'll press the green button. Here you go, it's just starting up. Training light. See one finish, so that means she's online, she's working. But yeah, pretty crazy. Yeah. Here you go, start time, finish time, station number one. It's got USB too. Interesting little device. So here's where the old one comes up. Loops around. Comes up into the control room. It else just comes out along the gate there. It's pretty much not used. Ah, oh, there's a toy. <laughs>